Hello and welcome back to Torment Tides of Numenera. So, I'm still trying to figure out how to get to the Sanctuary of the Changing God without the whole, like, genocide thing. So, I was going to reset my stat pools by going and sleeping at the, um, cultist camp. But, in addition to resetting my buffs, which would be slightly irritating, um, it would also, um, probably get someone else killed by the murder lurking about. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and use... some consumables here and see if I can get this roll done because I really don't want to like do the whole hostage thing okay so do you want your people to have a future do you want war with the humans above they will collapse your tunnels and destroy you 50% is the best I can get oh it considers your words for a time, and the scents that surround it vary from the frightening to the mundane. At last, the smells of synth and strong glass waft past your nose, and Chikek says, Human good good reason. Yes, Stitcha comply. Making a note. It scratches the wall and drums a pattern there. Stitcha move deeper, burrow to lesser rock. Starve for humans' sake. Not fight with humans is better. Alright, good for me. Good job, Diko. Well done. Okay, let's go talk to... what's her name here? Here we go. Fly. I hope you have use for me. news for me. Yes. I do indeed. Good news, I trust? I've handled the negotiations with the Sitcha. She shifts one foot to begin pacing, to start considering her options, and she stops. She slowly turns towards you, each eye rotating separately. She lowers her foot and turns to face you squarely and bites off each word. What did you do? I convinced Chakek that digging deeper would be a benefit to both the Stitcha and the humans. There's no need to steal their eggs. You left their eggs with them? How will we enforce their exile without that leverage? She smooths her crest and blinks her eyes slowly. Fine. We can work with this for now. We have time to engineer another solution. You are a wench. I'll remember that. She stops, the thought striking her. Did you promise them anything else? I did not. Good. Then our work here is complete, and I can return to Council Tower. Ooh, I've acquired a bonded item. These are powerful. They go in the bonded equipment slots. They fuse directly onto your skeleton. Ugh. Providing significant effects, but their invasive nature can also produce negative effects. All right. You can equip up to two bonded items at once. If your concentration's at novice, they both get negative. If trained... You only get negative from one. Specialized, you get two. Okay, yep, we uh, read through this way back in the day. The city of Sagas Cliffs owes you its gratitude. Yeah, I know. I'll credit you in my report to the council. That's right, you will. Cost me like 40 bucks for that inconsumable. And I ruled good on a 50. Okay, so let's take a look at this thing. So... Ebon Eyes. Plus one training and perception. Ooh. Immunity to dazed and blinded. Nice. This pipette contains a liquid of deepest um, foligan. I don't know. That is a, cult a color darker than black. Hmm. How much more black can it get? None. None more black. Applied to the eyes, the liquid spreads evenly over the eyeball. But instead of causing blindness, it enhances the user's vision and thickens, when necessary, to protect the eyes from harm. The liquid doesn't bond with the user's eyes. It rests lightly atop them, controlled by nanomachines that can be directed to keep the eyes in place and control their thickness. The liquid can be removed by crying black tears into the vial. Oh, that's so cool. So all it's going to give me is minus one training in stealth because I have... Yes. So I'm not going to get the negative effect from my first... Bonded artifact. Okay. So, and if I can just take this in and out. You know, I was actually going to go back and I was just thinking I'm going to go and get an eye swapped out. So, if I can go ahead and use this instead, because um, I already have a point in perception, so I only need one more to be maxed out. Um, this is better because it grants the immunity to dazed and blinded, and I don't know if the fake eye would or the mechanical eye to get rid of my weak ass meat eye. Gosh. Okay, so let's go ahead and just use this. Awesome. Max perception. Immunity to blindness. Nice. And I'm assuming that that didn't give me the minus one to stealth. It did not, because I was at zero. Nice. Alright. 
Good job. Now we're kind of moving along here. Okay, let's go back and let's talk to Chikekt again and see if I can talk him into letting me go to the Changing God Sanctuary, because now I don't have any leverage over them. Egg friend, Chikekt whistles. The smell of dust and closed air surrounds it. The creature is clearly glad to see you. Hey, awesome! Stitch a dig deep, like promise. Rock not as good there. The scent of a pocket of trapped gas arises. This equivalent of a shrug. But, Chikek, promise. Stitch a move. Human want travel? Can you take me someplace under the city? The Stitch's bows almost scuttling, and the warm smell of cooking rock arises from its back. Friend to Stitch it. Yes. No pay for you. Fee. Free. I would totally give you ten. So I'd like to go to the Changing God Sanctuary, please. It bows. Yes. For Stitch a friend, yes. Can take to Egg Tunnel. Then walk to place, yes? Hooray! Ugh. Good. I was so not into genocide. Or attempted genocide. It's, you know, no matter what I'm arping, that's just rude. Ooh, wow. Emerging from the freshly dug tunnel, you find yourself in a small chamber with veins of refined metal glimmering across the ground and walls. Chikak turns to face you. Place beyond was Egrim's, hatching chambers. Its claws work up and down slowly. Future Stitcha moved far away. Sanctuary on other side of Not Nest. Cool. This is so neat. Making a note. Making a note. Action. Oh, look at Here this place. Yeah, hold on. I gotta take a look at this. Oh, this is so cool. Okay. So, let's take a look at our journal here. Okay. So, let's go... Okay, there's the Changing Gods situated somewhere at the end. I'll have to find another way to reach it. Okay, yep. Neat. So, is this the way back to... Yes, to the Underbelly. So I can just wander around in here, huh? Oh, I can poke at these. Of course I'm gonna poke at it. Are you kidding? Poke at everything. Warm sinews of light lace the walls, spiraling into the base of a hollow statue. It gleams in the same color as the glowing strands. Faint scratches along the base, about the size of a stitch's claw, suggest they hit the statue while tunneling and could not extract it. Round tubes with apertures of various sizes connect to a central drum. A soft breeze from the newly dug burrow behind you hums over the openings. The gnarled metallic veins running through the rocky walls deaden the noise from the device. It is unlikely to be heard outside this room. Do I... Okay, blowing on it seems safe, because that's already happening and nothing bad has happened. Do I hit it or reach inside? Uh, let's start with the least invasive. Let's blow, blow across one of the apertures. Your stomach flips as a wave of vibrating air buffets you for a fraction of a second. Golden light flows up from the seams into the statue, forming a looping pattern in the center of the drum. As the rumbling continues, energy courses along the veins in the rock running into the device. After a moment, the sound gutters and dies away, but wispy tracings of the pattern continue to glow on the surface. It is approximately the size of a human hand, although the shape is more like a dozen tentacles. Let's... Seriously, you don't reach inside things you can't see, okay? I've seen this movie, and I know how it ends. On the other hand, putting my hand on light tracings is not always smart. Although it's worked out. Uh, there's a documentary called Total Recall that convinced me that. All right, so let's place my hand on the light tracings. To try something new. The same sound you heard earlier rattles your gut. It sputters but remains on. The acoustics haven't deteriorated over the millennia. Though the sound is intermittent, there's something fascinating about it that forces you to pay attention. You easily tear your focus away, but the effect might be stronger if the statue is fully intact, especially on a creature with non-human physiology. Tiber chuckles. That thing reminds me of a lass I once saw flaying a plute in Ion. Had a pack of gents stumbling after her, downright captivated. Might have been her music. Might have been the fact that she didn't have a single stitch on. Still, I remember the smile her most. Yeah, I bet you do. Neat. I'm going. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna reach inside it. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, there's lots of worse things. Oh. Whew. Just inside the tube, you feel a piece of loose material. It pulls free with a slight tug. Whatever technology the statue represents has been worn away by digging in time, but the fragments may still be useful to you. So I get some speed. Really, that's interesting. Look at these things I can poke at. Let's go. 
Smooth gray tendrils snake in and out of the rock along this wall, eventually growing out to cover the nearby doorway. Though metallic in texture, the material has grown like a vine or fungus. The individual strands are hard but soft to the touch. An inky black tendril with sparks darting from its tip extends from the blossoming, tightly bound creepers. You might be able to pull it free from the vine. So... I do have smashing, but I have more points in either natural lore or quick fingers, and there's actually a couple of us that can do this. So I can get to 95. You have a ton of stats, so why don't you just go ahead and take the guaranteed thing. Running a finger along the tendril, you feel a slight striation that indicates the grain of the vine. You slip a hand around it and pull directly against the weft. It comes cleanly away. The other strands loosen and separate as you move the fragment by them, then wind back together. Cool. What are you? Myco metal vine fragment. This is a fragment of the organic metal vine you found growing in the stitches layer. It shows some unusual magnetic properties. That's neat. And it's an oddity, so I don't know whether or not I need it. 172. Nice. We're just going to be rolling in cash here pretty quick. Okay. Let's poke at this. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. All right. Neat. Why not? All right, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> okay, so these are doors. Okay, I understand. So let's poke Ready. another one of these statues. Whoa. That's different. The glowing statue emits a low hum that tugs lightly at your mind, trying to draw your attention. The Stitcher cannot seem to resist it as you can. Okay, so this is probably how I would have stolen the eggs if I didn't want to just, like, rampage through and smash them. Would be to have kind of used this thing to hypnotize them. Of That's cool. Can help. Right off? Oh, look, this just keeps going. Yep, there's another one. I'm ready. What's down here? The six-fingered gloves are completely and utterly achromatic. Their singular lack of color is nearly hypnotic. Yeah, see? Six fingers on his left hand. I knew it. What is this stuff? Right, okay. Network tendrils of a strange vining metal have knitted themselves across the opening in this rock. Okay, so this is another door. Here comes the boredom slayer. Ah! Get! No! Get to the... Okay, note to self. Do not walk in acid. All right. Here Fine. I go. Lame. I like poking at these things. This device is larger and more pristine than the other statues you found in these tunnels. Two rounded drums are driven deep into the stone floor. Traces of light whirl in dizzying patterns across their surfaces, nodding in and around each other in tight jars. These glowing threads are similar to the ones on the other statues you've seen, but much more complex. An almost inaudible hum permeates the air around the device. Okay, we've got machinery lore, so let's try to manipulate the light patterns with your fingers to activate the machine. 90's good. You slide your fingertips across the surfaces of both drums, drawing the strands of amber towards the center. Stuttering energy builds in the hollows of the shrine. Your hands meet. A, ghost of, a, bo mm, a bo burst of golden light erupts from the machine. For a fraction of a second, your mind is wiped clean, stunned. Mesmerizing sound, yes. huh? Well, what did that do? Huh. Ready. Okay. That's weird. I'm gonna keep poking at these. So they're all kind of humming along. Let's go through here. I, I realize this is, like, almost completely no. unnecessary. No, 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 come back. I don't need to walk on the acid. Ready. Does this have... An exit marked on it yet? Okay, no. On it. Let's keep poking around. I, I don't think I need to turn these on, but I'm rather enjoying it. Why not? For no other reason than it's completely unnecessary, which is the best reason to do something. Yeah, I'm pretty confident that this would have been the other way that we'd gotten past this without trying to murder our way out. And I don't need to turn that one off, so I'm just going to ignore it. Doing BX learning, I guess. Okay, so where does this go? To the buried crossroads. Hello. All right. 
Oh, neat. Oh, neat. Oh, wow. Okay, so first let's glance at the journal. Okay, so now we can talk to him. But am I just going to leave this? Don't be ridiculous. Okay, Trust let's look at everything first. Well, kind of. Some of the glowing bands on this machine have gone dark. It seems to be dying. Okay, we'll come back to you because you're pretty obviously something scary. Ooh, what right. do we have over here? Well, well, well. Ooh, money. The Tome of Stinging Thorns. Yep. A cast-off tattoo is inscribed into the title page. Someone has attached a much newer tag to the binding which reads, Exclusive Property of Flinda and Steresty Booksellers. Alright. I don't know what it means to use it, so I'm going to not touch it. Healing Sword. Ah, cool. Okay, and that's a medium weapon. Good, another three-point thing. A light ranged weapon. Four energy damage. This prong device generates and projects short-ranged, powerful bursts of electrical power at targets. It has been cleverly modified to fit onto a human arm and rest comfortably in your hand. Ah, cool! I'll remember that. Okay. There's a bunch of things here to poke, and I don't really want to poke quite yet. Sleek and streamlined, this machine hums with energy. You're fairly certain that it came to life just as you entered the chamber. Okay. Go. Alright, let's poke at the thing in the middle first, obviously. A staggering array of mirrors and lenses encircle you. Cables run from their backs to various machines scattered throughout the room. Behind the display, you hear a hinge creak. Let's study this. The mirrors twitch as you gaze from surface to surface. Eventually, you realize why. They are attuned to your mind. You can move each one as effortlessly as your own hand. Every surface shows something else besides a reflection. A sliver of glass highlights a red cord around your throat. A small oval mirror lingers on a pulsing blue star beneath your forehead. The mirrors to either side of the large central mirror periodically flash purple. The tiny lenses above it all crane their necks to study you. Okay, this must be the new Numenera I've got on. Um, my necklace, which I think I'm still wearing. Am I still wearing that? Yeah, I am. And then this is the thing in my head. A nemesis. And you sense danger here as well. No, not sense. Remember. You remember that these mirrors are not directed just at this world, but at others as well. You can see things in this mirror that aren't visible to the naked eye. And if you aren't careful, they'll see you too. Okay, let's leave this alone for just a minute. There's other things to look at, right? So let's go take a look at this. The sorrow looms from this skillfully created mural. You can almost feel its clammy tendrils wrapping around your heart. Its inhuman victims twist and writhe, pleading for an impossible mercy. Oops. Stop it. Wow. Look at this thing. This is amazing. And I really don't want to meet it again, but that seems to be something that I get to do. So, okay, so let's poke at the machines. Let's poke at this one first. Of course. For no other reason than it has... I don't know, a nice design on the top. You poke idly around this old machine. It feels strangely and vaguely familiar, but memory's faint itch is fleeting. You have the barest feeling of images and information flickering around you, but nothing concrete, and nothing that lasts for more than a millisecond. Let's take a look at this a little more carefully. Something about this device suggests data sphere to you, but no, the memory is gone. Interesting. Okay. Data sphere, huh? Yes. Let's poke this guy. Now. This device looks like it was once part of some larger device or a network of devices embedded in the rock beneath the city. The thick cables disappear into holes in the wall. The machine gives off a low hum just at the edge of your hearing. It feels oddly familiar. Try to figure out how it works. Touching the etched surface reveals a display interface, but it seems unresponsive to your gestures and commands. The display does show a vast network of other devices it must be connected to. If you're reading it correctly, there's a vast array of machines and engines operating somewhere beneath the city. This interface might control them. So why is this place a sanctuary? You poke it, swipe it, yell at it, speak gently to it, but the interface is completely unresponsive to your commands. Alright. Well. Hmm. And no rolls for it. That's strange. Okay, 
Let's I'm poke going. at the almost certainly dangerous mirrors. Because what could possibly go wrong with that? Um... Move the silvered mirror that shows the red band around your neck. Mentally, you jostle the mirror and feel an invisible noose close around your throat and tighten. Uh-oh. Gasping, you sink to your knees, fall to your side. And as your vision goes dark, you realize that if you survive this death, you found a shortcut into the labyrinth. How convenient. I'm faltering. Oh. I'm hurt. Oh, hello. Neat. I was just complaining about this, about not knowing how to get into the labyrinth. Oh, this is so exciting. Ah, there's been two really cool things that have happened this time. Ha. <laughs> hello, Spectre. I can't say I expected you back so soon. Why am I here again? You died. I mean, not dead dead. But you came awfully close, he leans in. You should be more careful out there for, you know, both of us. So what should I do now? You need to find this Makina person. She might not know how to fix the chamber, but she's the only lead on who we've... Okay, right, I know that. So how do I get back again? Use the portal. Oh, of course, the portal. Has anything changed since the last time I was here? He shrugs. Look around. It's your mind. All right. Seems legit. All right. Ooh, empty reflection. I have that Numenera thingy. A woman shaped in the hole stands before you, her palms outstretched, and you sense something different. A smell, if emotions could smell. It is sharp confusion and a sense of displacement. Somehow, this woman shade knows that she does not belong Updated here in the my journal. Oh, says the specter, strolling up beside you. A reflection from a distant cast-off, isn't it? He studies the old line's outstretched hands. She's lost something, he says after a moment. Something out in the world that she misplaced or has taken from her. If you want to draw her here, you'll have to find it. I totally did. You turn back to the woman-shaped void. She continues to face you, hands held out imploringly, ignoring the specter completely. Let's place the puzzle box on the outline's palm. Making a note. You gently place the cube in the shadowy figure's hands. They close over it and, a young woman, the one you found dead in the ruins of the house, plunges toward you out of the darkness, filling the outline, until the outline is her. She nearly stumbles into you before she stops herself, blinking hard. Ouch, she says. You notice that the box you gave her is now as ghostly as she is. Interesting. Well done, the specter says, turning away from the stunned woman. I'll, uh, give you two some room to talk. You turn to the young woman again. Who are you? Saria, she says. You remember me. You found me beneath the chunks of my adopted father's house with my gut smashed to paste. Oh, okay. What do you mean, adoptive father? Or... Orciolo? Orciolo, I'm going with that. He was one of you, she says carelessly. A cast-off, I mean. A frown creases her forehead. Poor old man. He never wanted to be special. He found me, fed me, talked to me when I was, when I was you know, troubled. She sighs. But when the house fell on me, I guess, he just couldn't stand it, and he went looking for a way to die. A note. She falls silent, but you don't need to be told what happened next. You've seen the statue, after all. It was grief that drove Orselio to seek death in the sorrow's arms. Saria watches you, her eyes shining with some inner light. So you were important to him, do you know why? He thought he could help me, she says simply. He tried to calm me when that woman's voice in my head said I was her and not me. She smiles sadly. I wasn't the first. He'd helped other girls like me before. Hey, we met someone. I'll have to glance back and see who that was. The lady who couldn't say, like, um, what she was talking to, that she kept yelling loudly. But I think he knew that it couldn't last, she says, her smile fading. He was afraid, but not for himself. He believed, no, he knew, that I was going to die. One time, he said that he'd seen me die too many times, then shut himself up. She claps a hand to her mouth, lowers it, like that. She shrugs. But he wasn't wrong, was he? Even if he was a little crazy to begin with. No, he wasn't wrong. But you're here now. She nods moodily. Sort of, she says. I'm not really me, though. I'm a reflection of what my father saw of me, the only piece of his mind that's left. When he died, his part of the labyrinth, I guess. I want to say it broke, but it was worse than that. The cracks burst up through the ground, and everything started crumbling. I could feel parts of him slipping away, snapping off, she shudders. I'm glad you brought me here. I would have fallen apart eventually. 
Then there'd be nothing left of him. Nothing left of either of us. So he's, she's talking about being in his labyrinth. Huh. Do you know anything else about Orciola? I should, shouldn't I? She says, chuckling. I was part of his mind, after all. She passes a hand over her forehead absently, leaving her ghostly eyebrows completely disheveled. Eyebrows? Your eyebrows are long enough to be disheveled? But no, if I focus, I can see the other, the other women he took care of. The ones that looked like me, I mean. But it's like looking through dirty glass. I think, I think that means he didn't want to think about them, or couldn't. The ones that looked like you. She shrugs, looking away. I don't know why he spent all that time caring for us. I guess I'll never know for sure, but... All right, one time, I asked him what his tattoo meant. Atonement, he said, but not, you know, dramatically. He said it like he was saying his name, like... She pauses, rubbing her forehead again. Like it was everything he was. Like if he couldn't atone for, you know, whatever it was, there was no reason to exist anymore. Is she talking about the tattoo on my head? Atonement? For what? She sighs. But I don't know why he started, and I'll never get a chance to ask him. Grinning again, she rolls her eyes. And that's it. That's all I knew about the man who raised me for years. Kids, huh? What does this puzzle box mean to you? My father gave it to me, she says, beaming down at the ghostly version of the box in her hands. He said it was a very old puzzle, and that solving it would help me. She chuckles. I never did, but fumbling with it made me feel better. I always had the feeling the pictures on it might mean something, but that was as far as I got. Seriously, I solved it in like ten seconds, and you poked at it for years? Hmm. A creature named the Sorrow killed Orcelio. Do you have any idea how it found him? No, she says, staring at the air, thinking. He didn't abuse his power like some of you do. He didn't pull against the tides or use them as weapons. He never wanted to be noticed, to be found. She breathes in, breathes out. Didn't matter, didn't it? Alright, farewell. I'll be here, you know, in your head. Of course, where else would you be? And she is. You abruptly feel her presence inside your mind, as if she's always been there, a new weight behind your temples. Something, something has happened to you on an instinctual level. You've established a bond with this reflection. Some of her gifts are yours, and you feel stronger for it. However, this link fully occupies a corner of your mind. You may be able to forge connections with more than one reflection in the labyrinth, but not many. So I meet people and I can get changing buffs? Plus one might pool, speed, and int. Nice! Strengthening me in every way. Oh, that's super cool! Atonement! Atonement for what? Okay, this is the way I got here. So you're the only new person. Wow! Okay, super cool. Alright, back to meat space. Flash of light. Mirrors in a cutscreen. And welcome back. I assume. Hello. Handy trick, that immortality thing of yours. I know, right? Alright, so this is a good place to take a break. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.